Oh, those fast finishers. Every teacher has encountered these students in their classrooms. It feels like you only just have given out the assignment and already they are raising their hand and standing in front of you saying, I'm done. Or worse, they're blurting it out, distracting their classmates who are still busy on the assignment or individual task. In today's video, I've put together some of my favorite early finisher activities and simple tips on how to make the process of transitioning those early finishers to a new task simple. Stay tuned. What's kicking educational rock star? The Center Fairy here, your ultimate source into the wonderful world of classroom systems. Now, if this is your first time joining me here on the channel, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and click that bell so that you get notified when I go live or upload a new video here on the page. While some of your early finishers are done because they didn't take the time to carefully complete the work, other fast finishers are just that fast. Whether they're just good at the skill or are a high flyer who seems to just have everything done the first time, these fast finishers need something to engage their brains and give them some fun so that they can relax. Because no one wants to finish work more quickly to only have more work. Now today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite activities for early finishers and you can find all of the links to the resources that I'm going to share with you in the description so that you don't miss out on any of these amazing resources. Now the first resource I want to share with you is one of my favorite and it's so fun. The students love it and that is color by codes. I mean, who doesn't like to do color by codes? Now we have the color by code activities for math, specifically for first grade and second grade, but you can find color by code activities for pretty much any subject. And it's something that my students always loved to do. And I love to have these printed out. I would keep them maybe in a drawer or even maybe make them a few copies at the beginning of the week that they could keep in a folder in their desk so that if at any point they got finished with a task or with an assignment early, they didn't have to interrupt me. And I always taught this procedure at the beginning of the year so that they knew exactly what they should do if they got finished. So you can print those out. You can grab those over in my shop. But and they're, like I said, they're first and second grade for math. But again, you can find color by codes that are pretty much for any uh, any subject and you can have these available and they're super fun because kids like to color. Even my fifth graders love to color. So having something like a color by code activity that's still reviewing a skill makes review fun, but also makes sure that they have something to work on if they get finished early. Now, the second activity that I want to share with you is something that I've actually shared here a couple of times for a couple of different things, and that is spiral review. Can y'all figure, have y'all figured out that I love spiral review? I absolutely love using spiral review in my classroom. And whether I used it as morning work or I used it as a early finisher work, maybe I used it in centers, whatever it was I used it for, I love spiral review because your students cannot get enough review on the skills that they're learning in your classroom. Now, I love to use these for um, early finishers because even though I would have these bound and what I would do is I would print them out just like this and I would have them bound and this is one unit, okay? So one unit is supposed to last a month. Now, again, you can find these over in our shop and we have them for first, second, and third grade and uh, they have reading language arts and math on them and one page should take them about five to ten minutes it really depends on how quickly they work through it but the thing i loved about these is i would print them out i would bind them and whether you get a binding machine of your own or your school has a binding machine or you have them bound um, they don't have to be these spiral bounds you can do the um, plastic uh, bindings as well those tend to be a little bit cheaper but whichever way you decide to bind them um having them bound and read where the students can keep them in their desk, then you can use these for morning work. You can use them for extra practice. You can use them for early finishers. And usually what I would have my students do is, like I said, I would bind them and I would have them keep them in their desk and they would get them out in the mornings. And it was their bell ringer. It was what they would work on first thing in the mornings. But um, what I would also have them do is maybe they didn't get there in time in the morning. 
because our bell ringer time was usually within that first 10 to 15 minutes of class. It's usually when people were getting their coats off, putting everything in their in their cubbies or their lockers, or they were getting their homework turned in, whatever the case may be. And we always had those stragglers. So sometimes your students weren't actually getting to work on this first thing in the morning. And early finisher time was a great way time for them to work on this and get caught up. So this always stayed in their desk. They could work ahead. It never bothered me if they worked ahead. That was perfectly fine. Um, but the goal was that this whole book was finished by the end of the month. And then they would turn it in and they would either get a grade or they'd get a sticker or some, some other sort of um, reward for finishing this. Now, I also love to use these as early finishers for center work. So you guys know that I'm obsessed with centers. So using this as early finishers for centers, especially if you're having them uh, carry their, their folder from center to center, they can grab this, they can stick it in their folder, especially if it's bound, and then they can just pull it out. If they finish their center work early, they can pull it out and they can work on this and they're not interrupting you at your table. Now the third activity that I love, and again, it's what I'm obsessed with. I'm kind of obsessed with math and literacy centers, but I love to use digital centers for early finisher. Now why, you may be asking yourself, Farrah, why digital? Well, because digital doesn't require a lot of setup and a lot of prep. So if your students already have devices that they can very quickly grab, you've assigned some digital centers in Seesaw, maybe in Boom, maybe you've um, you've assigned them in Google Classroom where they can grab their, their device, they can very quickly sit down, they can open it, they can work on a math center or literacy center. It's just extra review, but it it's not, it doesn't require pieces. It doesn't require them to get things out that are going to have to be cleaned up because when it's time to move on to the next task, all it is is a simple closing the device and they can go right on with the rest of the class. So this is why I love using digital centers. Again, we have those available in our shop. You can find all those links in the description and jump over. If you're already using our digital centers, we would also love for you to drop down in the comments how you're using those digital centers in your classroom and what a difference they've made. Are you using them on Seesaw? Are you using them in Google Classroom? Are you using the Boom version? We want to know. So drop a comment down below. Now the next activity that I want to share with you is another game that we developed for primarily math, but we also have a few phonics versions for kinder and first grade, and that is our bump games. Now, bump games are great for early finisher games because they can be played individually or they can be played with a partner. Now, for early finisher activities, definitely probably going to be playing them individually, but they also don't require a lot of setup. If you have some of these already made up to where they're in a bin for early finishers, they go grab one, they bring it over, the game mat is one game, you have the, the game pieces inside, Typically, all I used was the little colored square counters and one or two die. That's all they really need. And they can sit and they can play that. And they're getting some review as well. But it's fun because it's a game. And who doesn't like to play a game? And again, like I said at the beginning, nobody wants to finish their work early if they know they're just going to have more work that they have to work on. So this is a way for you to sneak in some of that extra review because it's a game and they're going to have fun. So you can find the bump games. We have them for kinder all the way through third grade. And we have them in math versions. We do have a few phonics versions, but mostly math. But you can go check those out in our shop as well. Now, the last activity that I want to share with you that is great for early finishers, and the reason I love this game so much is probably because I invented the game, so I love it, but that's our Squares Your Brain games. Now, we have these for kinder, first, second, and third grade, and the Squares Your Brain games are so amazing because they are a teach them how to play once, and they can play forever and they're self-checking. So there's no worrying about whether or not you're having to walk over there and check their work. It is a game, but it's going to be self-checking so that they can flip it over, they can check their answers, and if they didn't get it right, it's not just simple where they turn it back over, put everything back, and switch stuff around. They really gotta play from the beginning again. But it, I love the fact that we made it self-checking, and we've got them available, like I said, ki kindergarten through third, and what you can do is you can print these up. You can have them created. Any of the games that I've mentioned, whether it be the uh, bump games or the squares your brain games, you can have those made up and just have those in Ziploc bags. Put them in a, in a bin or one of the rolling carts with drawers, whatever, and mark it early finishers. That way, when your students get finished with an activity, they know they don't have to interrupt you. They don't have to ask for your permission. They can simply go get an activity, get one of the games out of the 
the drawer and they can bring it over to their desk or their work area and they can sit and play. So you don't have to worry about them interrupting you. These are games that can easily be played single person or uh, with a partner if you allow them to work in partners with early finisher as an early finisher. But the, the key to this is making sure that you set that expectation at the beginning of the year. That way, when that time arises, they already know what to do. Whether it be the color by codes, which you can print out and you can have those just ready for them to go grab one. Whether it's the spiral review where you're going to bind them and you're going to have them keep them in their desk. Uh, the digital centers, all of this, the games, all of it, you need to make sure that you have shown them all of the processes. Now, many of you may be asking, well, Farrah, do I use all of these? Absolutely not. Don't use all of them all at once. I would suggest that you pick one, start with that one, and then once they've done that for a couple of weeks, maybe you add another activity into that, and then so on and so on and so on until you do introduce all of them. Because my students loved every one of these, and the great thing about it is, is if you've already got centers because you're you're doing centers in your small group reading or your small group math, then you're just reusing those for early finisher activities. If you're already using the spiral review because you're using it for morning work or bell ringer work, you've already got it. So why not use it for this too? The same goes for the bump games and the squares your brain games. If you've already got those, then why not use them as early finisher activities? There's no reason for you to go buy specific activities for your students as early finishers, use what you've got. If you're looking for more tips, strategies, and simple systems to take back in your classroom to make your teacher life a little easier, check out the videos on your screen. Thanks for watching and keep being an educational rock star.